Welcome to the Guided Expressions Podcast with Martin Williams, the place to learn and be inspired to live your best life. Here is your host, Martin Williams. Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Williams, and thank you for tuning in to the Guided Expressions Podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and SoundCloud as well. All the links for the podcast can be found at guidedexpressions.com forward slash podcast or on YouTube, wherever you are listening to this on YouTube, of course. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today, what I wanted to talk to you about is the Blueprint Visualization System. It's a program that I'm coming out with. Uh, a rather short training is shorter than the Blueprint itself, but this is more or less a an, an introduction to visualization and how to use visualization to bring about the type of life changes that you want. Visualization is something that you discover. It's not something that you necessarily uh, create, even though you can create through visualization. It's a power that you have to discover because we all have it and we all do it. Like People oftentimes want to be taught visualization, but the, the funny thing is that they're already doing it. It's just that they don't realize what they're doing or how they're doing it. And so I like to call visualization something like a discovery. You you know, you discover your power of visualization and you use it on purpose versus, you know, using it by accident and, um, you know, having some sporadic success, but oftentimes uh, visualizing negative things or visualizing things that you don't want. So I like to call visualization a superpower. It's a superpower that we all have, right? If you watch a superhero movie, and usually when a, a superhero or a superheroine discovers their powers for the first time, it's often through, you know, uh, an accident or it's through some kind of problem that they have to overcome, and they realize that they have this this power. And you know, they're able to, from that point on, use that power on purpose versus using it, again, by accident or using it sporadically. And so visualization is that for a lot of people, um, including you and including me. It's just that we don't use it uh, a lot of times as, as often as we should. I think visualization is something you should use every single day. I think you know, when you get up in the morning, you should be visualizing at at bare minimum how you want your day your day to be. Uh, you should be visualizing how you want the outcome of your day to go. You know, do you want to get everything done? Do you want to be refreshed and f- and feel uh, rejuvenated? You know, these are things that you should visualize happening uh, before you jump into your day. And oftentimes, people do the exact opposite. We just get up and um, just kind of go into our day, but we don't really set um, an intention on how we want that day to go. So how what has visualization done for me is, is, is a very good question. I remember when I was, uh, and I'll just pick out a couple stories. There's a lot of stories, but I'll, I'll pick out a couple uh, I remember when I was, I remember when I was in uh, Dominica, which is a Caribbean island, um, and I was going to medical school. And, um, it was an American medical school that was situated on this island, and so um, things didn't go too well there. <laughs> it had a lot of like financial issues, and also had. Um, you know, trouble really keeping up with the courses and everything else. And I eventually had to, had to leave. So when it came time to leave, um, I had to take a van from the school where the school was, which was, I believe it was Portsmouth, uh, Dominica to Roseau. Roseau is the capital 
of Dominica. So from Portsmouth to Roseau is roughly an hour, and it's along uh, the coastline of the Caribbean Sea. So, you know, you see some amazing views on the way down to Roseau, but, you know, it's also like on, you know, if you watch movies um, that are set in California, you see the uh, the roads are, you know, they're kind of like winding roads and they're on like the edge of these cliffs. So, you know, basically like one wrong turn and you might end up in the Caribbean Sea, right? And so the, the people that drive these vans, you know, because they know the road so well, they, you know, they're basically speeding. And I don't even know if there was a speed limit in Dominica at the time. Uh, a lot of people drove as if there wasn't one. Uh, so these drivers are driving, you know, 80 miles, 60, 70 miles an hour around, uh, you know, these cliffs. And so some people uh, who aren't used to that would get car sick. But anyway, that's a side note. So we, so I took the van, I was going to take the van down to Roseau where I would catch a ferry, which would take me to Guadalupe. And then from Guadalupe, I would fly to San Juan and then eventually fly to the States and fly home. I had to change planes like maybe two or three times uh, in order to get to my home at the time, which was Virginia. Anyway, um, I had a small problem, right? My mom had purchased the ticket um, for me to go back home, okay? But I didn't have enough money to go from the uh from where I was in Portsmouth to Roseau I just didn't have it so I was you know it's a bit of a problem and, and these people you know money is very money was very tight in Dominica you know it maybe it's changed now but back then it was there was a lot of poverty so you know these guys that were working they they weren't going to do you a solid <laughs> and give you a free ride. Nor nor was I expecting them to. But um I didn't have any money. So what so it, it became an issue like okay well, well how do I how am I going to get to Roseau and catch this ferry and there's no refunds and you know my mom, you know, she didn't have a whole lot of money either. Um you know, she was basically like doing, you know, kind of just taking here, taking from there to, to help me out. Long story short, I, I'm looking through all of my change and I find some Euro coins. Because when I was in, um, when I was in uh, Guadalupe the last time, I had gotten some coins, some Euro coins. Now, the euro is was used in Guadeloupe because Guadeloupe is kind of a, a territory of, of France, much like Puerto Rico is a territory of the United States. Uh, so Guadeloupe, Guadeloupe, you know, they used the euro there. And so I had euro coins. Um, and then, uh, you know, I would, I, you know, I kept them. So I, I, I was keeping them as a souvenir uh, to take back to the States. But I couldn't. You know, I didn't have any other money, so in Dominica you can't use the euro. The euro is um, that's for Guadeloupe, and Dominica is what's called the EC or the Eastern Caribbean dollar. So all the Eastern Caribbean countries kind of band together and use the same currency, and there's a significant value difference. I think at the time it was like one to three, so basically one euro was worth three. Eastern Caribbean dollars. I'm taking a long trip here, but bear with me. Now, when it came time for the van to come, I had to figure something out. So I, I just gave, I you know, I gave the the driver the euro coins, and he kind of looked at them. He looked at me, and then he's like, "Let's get in the car, right?" So that was a win. But I, again, I was racking my brain like how am I going to get in this van so before he came out of nowhere I just visualized me being on the ferry and getting to Guadalupe now the only way that I'm going to get to on the ferry and get to Guadalupe was for me to get that van 
down to Rozo. And, you know, I wasn't just under a money crunch. I was also under a time crunch. So anything bad happens, any accident happens, any flat tire, anything, I'm missing that ferry and I'm out that money. And again, my mother didn't have any real extra to, to send because she had her own bill. She had her own responsibilities. You know, my, my, um, my sister was, I think, you know, maybe f- five or six at the time. Like she just didn't, she didn't, she didn't have any extra money like that. So well, she was a little older, but still, um, my point is everything had to work perfectly in order for me to get on that ferry. And I visualized it. And the thing is, I hadn't taken a visual visualization class, hadn't really read about it. I read a little about Brian Tracy and, um, you know, the power of positive thinking and all that stuff. But I hadn't really re- read like in depth. I hadn't really studied it, but I visualized, I said, I'm getting on that ferry. And, you know, I just saw, I started seeing myself on that ferry and sure enough, it happened. And I said, wow, that's, that's amazing. Cause again, everything had to work out perfectly in order for me to get on that ferry. And, um, so that was one cool story about it. And then another one was I needed to, um, I wanted to go to California. I didn't need to go, but I wanted to go to California and I was working for a company in Pennsylvania and they were going to send, um, people to trainings, right? Uh, they had a training that was local, but I didn't want to go local. I wanted to go to California. So I was told that, well, they have a local training. They're not going to send you to California, right? That's what I was told. So I could have, I could have just like gave up on it and said, all right, I'm I'm just not going to go to California. I got to go local and and take the training there. But I didn't settle for that. I said, no, I really want to go to California. But it it had been, it would have been the first time that I've ever been. So what I did was in my apartment in Philadelphia, I I just started reading Neville Goddard and his work really, um, really touched me in a way that very few works have before or since, to be honest. Um, and I, you know, I still read and listen to Neville Goddard to this day. And so he, you know, if, for those of you that, that know Neville Goddard, you know that the biggest thing he talked about was visualization. That was like his main thing. So he uh, would talk about how, you know, you visualize where you want to be and then you feel as if you're already there and, you know, bring in all of your senses. And he told his old stories as well. So I stood in my apartment and I felt the sand of California. Like I felt the wind coming from the ocean. I felt all of that in my apartment. Like I, you know, I used every part of my senses. I used my mind. I used all of that to feel as if I was already there. That's what I did. And I I didn't, I didn't spend a lot, a lot of time, maybe like five or 10 minutes. And then I just let it go. So I was, um, at the time I was living by myself, I just, um, I was in the midst of a divorce and, um, we, when we got the apartment, we got it together. And then, um, once the divorce started kicking in, um, of course my my ex-wife, she moved back to her home and I was more or less trying to like figure out how to, how to pull everything in the house together, um, on one income. So yeah, it was a, it was an adjustment period. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it was tight for a little while. So I didn't have a whole lot of extra money. Um, so basically I needed them because the way most work trips operate is that you pay for the trip and then get reimbursed. Well, I didn't really have a lot of money to pay for a trip going there anyway. So, (laughs) you know, it was, uh, it was a bit of a problem, but anyway, I visualized it and then I released it. So when I was in church that week, I got the urge to give money and I always give, but, 
um, you know, I was, I was more or less struggling with it because again, money was tight and I, you know, I had a heart to give, but at the same time I was looking at my expenses and I was looking at all of these different, um, you know, obligations that I got to fulfill. So I, I said, around, I'm just going to release this money. And I, I gave $40, right in church. And again, there wasn't a whole lot of extra money for anything. <laughs> um, but I gave it and that was that. And so a few days later at work, um, I was, I asked the, um, one of the admins to, if, if the company would front me the money to fly to California instead of a reimbursement. Now I was told again, that this is not done. Right, I was told that this is not something that's possible. This is not done. Can't do it. Right. So, maybe like two days later, the um, the employee walks and, and and gives me a check, and it's the check for the the flight out. So I was able to fly out to California. Now, that's not the end of the story because, again, I don't. That, that there's really no extra money, so I'm gonna need to eat while I'm out there. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna need to like get around and all this other stuff. But um, so, so I needed to, I needed to fly out to California. So I bought the ticket, and I was able to buy the ticket, pack and forth. But there was no, there was no extra money after that, right? Um, and so. After the uh, after after the plane ticket was purchased, I got to the airport and they overbooked the flight as many airlines do, and they said, "Well, here's what we need to do: we need to, you know, basically um, ask some people to fly standby and take a later flight." So I went ahead and volunteered, and for my troubles, I got a free ticket, right, which was pretty cool. And, you know, I think the ticket was worth up to, I don't know, 400, 400 bucks or something anywhere that that airline flew, okay? So I had that in my back pocket, which was pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, I get out to California and I had an amazing time. I had like, I had no money, <laughs> right? I had no money, uh, really. I mean, I probably had less than 50 bucks. I had to make 50 bucks last three, three and a half days in California. But, you know, I made it happen. There was a lot of Carl's Jr. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was a lot of, uh, you know, taking the bus and whatnot, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't care because it was just so much fun and it was the summer and the, the days were longer. So after my training was done, I had time to explore and, uh, see what all of what California had to offer. And I ended up at the beach and it, it was, it was kind of, it was really a fulfilling feeling to stand on the beach and stand on that sand. Cause I had visualized that exact same picture in Philadelphia. And when you look at everything that had to shift in order for that to happen, that's a power that we've all got, right? We've all got it. Uh, and, you know, I got, and look at all the other extras that I got out of it. You know, I was able to, you know, get a free ticket anywhere and, um, you know, it was really cool. So one more story it was when I needed to go back to school, I needed to um, finish up my master's degree. And, um, you know, I just, I just run out of money. You know, I'd spent, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars and I got to a point where I couldn't really spend anymore. And so I had to take a break. And in the midst of taking a break, the school I was going to said, well, you can't really use those credits anymore because you were out for too long, which, you know, I had a bit of a problem with, but, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, I had to basically finish, and it, what they did was that they put me into a different master's program where I could use my credits, 
But the bottom line was that I needed another probably $6,000 to finish, and I just didn't have it. And um, I was, you know, I was, I was, I just had a lot going on. I had a lot of, like, money coming out for other things. And so there just wasn't a lot to go around. So what I did was that I went back to my visualization again, and I visualized having that degree in my hand. And I went a step further. I created a degree online um, and put my name on it. There's there's a website where you can put your name on a degree, and it looks real, and save it. So that's what I did. I saved it, and then what I did was I visualized graduating. I visualized having the degree in my hand. I didn't visualize how I was going to be able to pay for it. I didn't visualize any of that. I visualized having a degree in my hand, and I visualized graduating, and I just kept doing it. I've, you know, I certainly did it more than a few times, and out of nowhere, I got some money, some unexpected money, um, and I also got some, I, I got a tax refund, and I was working at a job, probably the best paying job that I'd, I, that I'd ever had, um, up to that point. And all these confluence of factors, I was able to finish my degree. And so what a, I told all those stories and took really long trips <laughs> telling those stories to really get over to you how powerful visualization can be and you know maybe money is not an issue for you certainly uh money was an issue in all three of those but maybe money's not an issue for you maybe maybe it's you know health maybe it's time whatever the case may be the the blueprint visualization system is really designed to visualize the end goal, like visualizing where where you want to end up and playing that movie over and over again, seeing yourself in the movie and not being concerned about how you get there, okay? Because when you start getting concerned about how you get there, that basically throws a wrench in everything. And, and most of the time, people just give up because of all of the challenges that they may be facing at the time. And instead of worrying about how you're going to get there, you just say, you know what, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to see myself there. And this is a power that we all have. And it's something that cuts through every limitation that you could possibly have. And you'd be amazed what, you're, what you are able to create when you start using this system right? You use the system for everything. Excuse me. You use the system for, you know, if you, if you have financial problems, you use it for that. If you have uh, health problems, you know, you visualize yourself being healthy, you know, visualize yourself walking around with, with no pain, you know, visualize yourself telling people, you know, I feel great. I feel amazing, right? If you're sick, you're not going to be telling people that, right? So visualize yourself telling people how how great you feel, how healthy you feel, how much energy you have. Visualize telling people what an amazing job you've got. Visualize telling people about your business. You know, my, my business is amazing. Like My business is, is, is bringing in more income than I've ever made before. You know, my business is bringing in all kinds of opportunities and, you know, just talk about where you want to be and then visualize yourself being there, right? And what happens is that the, your subconscious mind, the more that you play this movie, your subconscious mind, because of the way that you're made, starts moving things around and, and really moving you around and changing you and placing you in positions where you can make that happen for yourself. And not only, you know, it's not, not just you, but, you know, it puts you in position and, you know, it also, you know, it also 
gives you inspiration to say the right things. Uh, it gives you an inspiration to do things just like it gave me the inspiration to um, give that money in church. It gave me the inspiration to use my Euro coins. Um, it gave me the inspiration to uh, uh, one addendum to the story about me getting my degree. I started, um, I started registering for my courses before I had the money, right? Because they let you pre-register. So I, I would register for my courses and, you know, I would hit send. And then the one, I did that one semester and I lost my courses and then I did it the next semester and then I got them. But I, I registered as if I had the money already, it's things like that, okay? And when you get really good at this, you, you'll go from maybe, you know, getting parking spaces or, you know, smaller things to big things. And you're able to do that because you have that power within you already. You just, you know, for a lot of people, they just don't know how to use it. And that's where I come in. I teach people how to use it. So that's what the, the uh, Blueprint Visualization System is, is a program and it will walk you through all the steps to visualize the type of life that you want. And it's exciting. It's fun. Visualization is one of the more, most fun things that you can do. It's completely free. The program isn't, but <laughs> visualization is free. And it's something that I think a lot of people will like. I think you'll enjoy it. Um and I, I look forward to having it in your hands really, really soon. Uh, hopefully by uh, May 1st, um, I will have that 100% uh, completed and ready to share with the world. And uh, I can't wait until I get it into your hands. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to see a life change uh, in you that, um, you know, you've never seen before. And it's going to be awesome. So thanks for listening to me uh, ramble <laughs> about, uh, you know, about some of the stuff that's happened in my life. And, you know, hopefully uh, it helped you, hopefully encouraged you to really uh, dive deeper into this visualization system and, uh, and hopefully get the program. And uh, I think the program is going to be a blessing to you. So again, my name is Martin Williams. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to the podcast and i will talk to you soon don't forget to subscribe to the guided expressions podcast on youtube apple podcasts or spotify to get all the latest content from guided expressions no one builds a house without a blueprint so why are you trying to build your dream life without one that's how the blueprint course was created the blueprint course is for people who know they were meant for more created by martin williams the blueprint is a streamlined way to help you create the life you've always wanted and access now by clicking the link in the description box or going to guidedexpressions.com forward slash blueprint.